introduction. Darth Malgus is the leading Sith in Star Wars, The Old Republic. He is a commanding figure who appears to be a Sith Lord. But what sets him so far apart from the others? Darth Malgus's reputation is a result of his in-game and additional literature background, as well as his notoriety in The Old Republic's visual trailers. Star Wars The Old Republic, first launched in 2011, is a massively multiplayer online role-playing game in which players build their own unique character, choosing from many classes such as Jedi Knight or Imperial Agent and go on to adventures across the galaxy. From its inception, Darth Malgus has been the game's principal nemesis and fans have seen fantastic portrayals of the figure. A lot of the Old Republic's visual trailers, including the inaugural reveal, books, comics and short stories have included him. As a result, there is a great deal of information accessible to help us understand who the figure is and how he links with the larger Star Wars universe. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Who is Darth Malgus and what's the fuss all about? Darth Malgus had been a male human Sith Lord of the resurrected Sith Empire between the Great Galactic War and the Third Galactic War. He was born in Imperial space with the name Veradun and raised by his foster father. Veradun murdered a Twi'lek worker on his dad's estate while he was still young, displaying the malevolent intent underneath his force sensitivity. The little kid was later taken to the Sith Academy in the Imperial city of Drummond Cass, in which he rose to the rank of Sith warrior and Imperial military leader. Veradun found the Twi'lek servant girl Elena Daru on a journey to the Outer Rim universe of Geonosis and claimed her as his own. The two fell in love despite the fact that she was legally his servant. They fought alongside each other in numerous battles throughout the Great Galactic War with the Galactic Republic. Veradun eventually abandoned his birth name in favour of the Sith title Darth Malgus. Malgus and his lord Darth Vindican had led the triumphant recovery of the Sith world Korriban in the beginning, until the former killed the latter for being wounded at the hands of Kao Sen Darach, a Jedi master. Malgus conducted a surprise attack on the core world of Alderaan during the height of the conflict. Though seemingly successful, Malgus and his soldiers were crushed in a focused Republic counterattack commanded by his enemy from Korriban, eventual Grand Master Saitli Shan. During the battle, the Sith Lord was severely injured and was forced to use a mask for the rest of his life. During 3653 BBY, the Empire engaged in phony peace talks with the Republic that was actually a diversion for the Sith's ultimate target, the Republic city of Coruscant. Malgus was picked by his commander Darth Angrel to lead a strike force that would raid the Jedi Temple during the siege on Coruscant. Before the Sith fleets came to lay waste to the remainder of the world, Malgus managed to murder a significant number of Jedi defenders, notably Ven Zalo, a Jedi master. He has since been dubbed Malgus's most memorable death. The Sith had wrecked the Jedi Temple, slaughtered half of the Jedi High Council, and shamed the Jedi Order in the face of the Republic by the conclusion of the battle. Although Malgus had expected the Imperial Armada to burn down Coruscant and crush the Republic and get it over with, the conflict was ultimately utilized primarily as an influence in the Alderaan peace talks. When the Alderaanian summit was taking place, the Sith took over Coruscant. Malgus was put in command of orbital safety, but the Sith Lord ignored his orders and returned to Coruscant's surface to take on Aaron Lina, the rogue Jedi who was looking for Malgus for the death of her master, Ven Zalo. Although Lina failed catastrophically, the conflict made Malgus lose faith in the Empire and consider his connection with Daru to be a flaw. As a result, he was obliged to assassinate his beloved in order to maintain his own authority, which he eventually used to rid the Empire of the officials he blamed for enabling the Republic to thrive. Malgus led Sith troops into the undiscovered regions during the Cold War periods that followed the Empire's successful peace negotiations, seizing previously unknown regions for the Empire. Malgus rose to prominence at the conclusion of the Cold War, 
after the believed demise of the Sith Emperor. After participating in the Dark Council, he established a new empire free of the Dark Council's infighting. He was eventually tracked down to his hidden base and crushed by the Empire and the Republic. Malgus reappeared in the invasion of Ossus in the commencement of the Third Galactic War, this time acting for the Emperor Darth Vauron, as well as the Sith Empire as a military leader. However, after the Meridian Complex attack, Malgus went rogue, seeking to relieve himself of all mental and physical limitations. Darth Malgus initially appears as an anonymous Sith in the deceived teaser for Star Wars, The Old Republic, an unreleased computer game. Malgus, played by Jamie Glover, serves as the narrator in the teaser. However, the character does get at least one line of dialogue when he defeats his Jedi opponent. Malgus was discovered in a record on the Old Republic website's Holonet database, which contains Orobesh terms like First Contact, Friend to Mandalore, and Yablari, Trandosha, Kali. Malgus also appeared in the Hope and Return teasers and was a prominent personality in Paul S. Kemp's work The Old Republic Deceived, which was published on March 22, 2011. Darth Malgus's armor was eventually introduced in the game titled The Sith Raider Armor, a set of armor that can be purchased via the cartel market system. Malgus is mentioned as a member of the Dark Council in the mission log description for The Challenge of War on Ilam. The in-game dialogue, however, does not reference him as that and also contradicts previously stated information regarding Malgus's reluctance to work on the Council. During the San Diego Comic Con 2015 Cantina Tour, a fan event helmed by BioWare, a clip and several concept arts from the Star Wars, The Old Republic, Knights of the Fallen Empire, visual trailer Sacrifice were shown, showing Darth Malgus in Carbonite, brought before the Emperor of the Eternal Empire, Valkorion, by Thexon and Arkan. The character, however, was just referenced and did not appear in the edition, which was released soon on October 27th of that year. After a thousand years, Korriban is ours again. Welcome home. The traumatic backstory of Darth Malgus. Veridun had been a force-sensitive human boy born in the world of Dromund Cass, the headquarters of the resurrected Sith Empire in the year 3700 BBY. Veridun was reared by an adopted father, a scientist in the Imperial Science Bureau. He ran a private zoo on a planet, apart from Dromund Cass, with Empire financing, collecting and studying many exotic creatures. Veridun used to care for the animals at the menagerie as a youngster, feeding them and scrubbing their cages. The little child also took Force training from a variety of teachers, all of whom saw his great promise in the Force. A Twi'lek servant woman on Veridun's father's estate committed a small infraction when he was young. Veridun killed the lady to show that he was competent in doing so, despite the fact that the incident itself was unimportant to him. The father was satisfied with his son's deeds. He reported them to the Sith Academy in the Imperial capital, planet of Drummond Cass. Veridun was to depart the estate and enlist as a Sith warrior at the Academy. Veridun's adoptive dad took him to a zoo trip the day before his departure to teach him three lessons about personal behavior, deceit, and expectations. The lessons his father taught him by making use of creatures and their conduct had a significant influence on Veridun and influenced his subsequent views. The following day, Veridun was transported to Drummond Cass, where he was finally chosen as a pupil by a Sith master, the pureblood Darth Vindican. Veridun encountered a small Twi'lek servant girl named Elena Daru during a voyage to the Outer Rim colony of Geonosis. Veridun murdered her master and claimed the Twi'lek to be his own after witnessing Daru being tortured and brutally assaulted by her owner. Ignoring the Empire's anti-interspecies and anti-alien marriage rules, the two became lovers and he actually started to treat her as a wife. As a result of being chosen as a Sith trainee, Veridun adopted a new name. Malgus. The Empire emerged from concealment in 3681 BBY and invaded the Galactic Republic multiple times, igniting the Great Galactic War. Vindican and his student were chosen to take part in the Sith attack to regain the Sith-scared world of Korriban, and in the Battle of Korriban, they boarded a Fury-class Imperial Interceptor to capture the Republic's spacecraft above the planet. 
After arriving at the hangar and stopping the personnel of the station from leaving on board the freighter, the pair disembarked to face the two Jedi who were nearing the hangar. While Vindican was engaged in combat with Kao Sen Darach, a Sabrak Jedi master, Malgus targeted Darach's Padawan Saitle Shan. At first, the Sith easily outmatched the younger human, but a flick of Darach's lightsaber placed Malgus on the losing side and enabled Shan to recover her footing. Malgus's instructor answered by firing a bolt of electricity at Malgus's adversary, but Darach came to his pupil's rescue once more by hitting the warrior using the Force, forcing Vindican to shift targets and assault a neighboring vessel owned by a smuggler called Nico Okar. Okar was frantically attempting to restart the ship so that he, as well as the Jedi, could flee. At the same time, a Republic soldier called Jace Malcolm protected the ship from the Sith onslaught by throwing a rocket at him. Vindican effectively countered the projectile but was furious when he saw Darach instruct Shan to flee on the vessel. Malgus, enraged that his opponent was fleeing, confronted Darach alongside his master, defending himself using both Shan's and his double-bladed sabers. Despite the Sith's superior numbers, Darach successfully repelled their strikes, striking Vindican in the face before slashing the Sith master in his chest. Despite the death of Malgus's mentor, the young Sith retrieved Vindican's lightsaber and attacked Darach, swatting off the Jedi's volleys of machinery and metal. Malgus brought the combat to an end by severing Shan's saber from Darach's hands and pounding down the Zabrak's defenses. Malgus was startled to see his master still alive, and he insulted Vindican for failing to stop the survivors' escape before beheading the Sith pureblood as they saw the Sith armada fall on Korriban. Malgus wandered alone on Korriban's surface after the war and had a force vision in which both the Republic and the galaxy burned. Malgus became convinced that he was to blame for the demise of the Republic as well as its Jedi Order. Malgus was raised to the level of Sith Lord in the days after the Battle of Korriban, and he was given the title of Darth in approximately 3667 BBY. Darth Malgus was chosen to personally command Imperial forces during a sneak raid on the peaceful world of Alderaan inside the Core Worlds. Malgus deployed thousands of attack droids and Imperial warriors, followed by hundreds of Sith on Alderaan's land after the Empire finished a brutal orbital bombardment. Malgus went on to lead the Imperials on a rampage across the world, killing cities and burning forests on their way to the capital city. As the Sith Lord marched across a valley, soldiers of the Republic Special Forces Havoc Squad launched a guerrilla counterattack. Commander Jace Malcolm led his men against the Imperials, causing Malgus to protect himself against many Republic soldiers. Malcolm unleashed numerous rockets towards the Sith Lord after witnessing him killing his men. Malgus had been able to shield himself from the explosions, although they disfigured his face. And as the soldier approached him, the Sith fired a bolt of lightning to stun him. Three Sith planned to execute Malcolm at Malgus' instruction. But the appearance of Stele Shan, who is now a Jedi Knight, protected the soldier's life. Shan launched a force blast as she stood behind her companion, sending the three Sith flying and drawing Malgus' attention. The two adversaries proceeded to combat, with Malgus pushing Shan to the ground with his mighty strikes, but Shan forced the Sith Lord back by causing a nearby tree to fall to the floor between them. Malgus was able to split Shan's lightsaber in two as their combat progressed, forcing her to deflect Malgus's lightsaber using her bare hands by trapping the weapon's energy. Malgus' speech was cut short as Malcolm attacked the Sith Lord, struggling with him before showing that he was clutching an explosive. Malcolm was thrown backwards by the ensuing explosion, but Malgus was somehow able to resist the blast despite the damage on his face. Shan then used this time to use the force on Malgus, pushing him onto a neighboring cliffside before releasing a second very powerful blast that swept the entire cliff down on top of him. The Sith troops were retreating as reinforcements from the Republic arrived in the system to assist the wounded Republic defenders. Shan was critical in providing encouragement to the suffering Republic soldiers on the ground. Malgus was rescued by his own shuttle after surviving the incident. He ignored his wounds because he was frustrated and furious by his failure. His breathing sounded raspy across the wood. Burns pricked his flesh. His lungs had been harmed. 
lacerations and contusions formed a bleak mosaic on his skin. Malgus, strangely enough, felt no discomfort. Malgus detected the company of a Jedi inside a wrecked city on Alderaan as he left the planet. Malgus, seeking vengeance on those who had denied him victory, directed his shuttle's driver to turn the vessel around and linger over the city. Despite the pilot's concerns, Malgus sprang off the plane to face the Jedi among the ruins of the city. When the Sith arrived on the ground, he summoned the Jedi. A Zabrak Jedi emerged from one of the structures and recognized him, activating his two lightsabers to face him, revealing his expertise with Jar Kai lightsaber battle technique. Malgus charged at the Zabrak Jedi to fight him, but was taken by surprise when his challenger used the Force to knock down two buildings built of steel and duracrete on the Sith Lord in an effort to kill him. Malgus was stuck behind a pile of rubble and had to utilize the Force to keep himself from being crushed. Dust aggravated his already difficult breathing. Malgus was so consumed by his desire for vengeance that he neglected to properly assess the strength of his newfound Jedi adversary. With a strong will, he restrained his rage, controlled it, and turned it into a tool for sharpening his powers. He used the Force to blow masses of rubble away from him. It crashed into surrounding structures. Malgus leaped over the wreckage and stood on the sidewalk. The Zabrak Jedi was taken aback. Malgus lunged at his opponent once more, this time engaging him in a heated lightsaber combat. Malgus launched a hail of lightsaber blows, preventing the Zabrak Jedi from counterattacking. The Jedi fled before going on the offensive, desperately avoiding Malgus' strikes. Malgus' lightsaber cut brilliant crimson arcs in the air as he pushed closer to the Jedi. His opponent kept giving him leeway. Malgus quickly understood that the Zabrak Jedi intended to bait him. Malgus enhanced his force senses and sensed the emergence of yet another Jedi nearby. This Jedi was lurking among the ruins and suppressing his signature with the Force. Malgus pounced on the Zabrak Jedi with a flurry of powerful punches and a Force-augmented rotating sidekick to shove him out of the way. He then grabbed the second Jedi by the Force, yanked him out of concealment and smashed his windpipe. The Zabrak Jedi was incensed by the death of the second Jedi and charged towards Malgus. The Sith Lord, however, launched a devastating torrent of Force electricity which overpowered his opponent's shields and began to sear his skin. But despite his burns, the Jedi stumbled cautiously towards Malgus behind the protection of his lightsabers, taking a single step at a time. Malgus channeled additional strength and pushed the Jedi to the ground, causing him to scream in agony. Malgus's lightning encircled the Jedi, blasting black holes in his flesh and causing his lightsabers to fall to the ground. His strike wrecked the Zabrak Jedi, but he was still alive. The Sith Lord paused to watch the Jedi's defeated expression before impaling him. While rejoining his soldiers in retreat, he remembered his foster father's third and last instruction. Often, there was simply an empty cage as he joined his retreating forces. Daru nurtured Malgus back to health after the war on Alderaan, but the jaw wounds he got during the conflict required him to wear a respiratory mask that encased his mouth, neck and nose. Towards the end of the war, Malgus commanded an operation against the Republic on the Outer Rim, and he kept a personal journal of his adventures. Malgus' armies assaulted the planet Ord Radama, 129 days into his campaign, and Malgus, as well as Darth Venemal, a Sith Lord, oversaw the deployment of Sith soldiers on the planet. Malgus and Venemal subsequently led a squadron of Sith troops in an attack on a Republic artillery force at the bottom of a cliff. As Venemal and a squad of commandos destroyed the weapons, Malgus led his surviving forces over a mountain pass, rolling a big rock down the pathway to ignite a multitude of mines that sat along their path. Malgus rejoined Venemal's crew as he reached the mountain's peak, and he praised the commandos after learning that they had wiped out a Republic base. More Sith warriors arrived on Radama, and a number of days later, Malgus rallied his men and delivered a speech to rally them in anticipation of an invasion on Livian Magnus, the main city of Ord Radama. Malgus' army surrounded Livian Magnus, aiming to starve the residents to death. A week into their assault, Lord Adras, a competitor of Malgus, was dispatched by the Emperor's Consultative Dark Council to Ord Radama in order to help Malgus. 
Malgus was irritated by Adras' arrival on the planet, and when Adras proposed sending several Mark I and Mark II Sith warbots to clear a way into the city, Venomal and Malgus did little to discourage him, despite their reservations about the droid's skills. The droid stormed the city's south gate on Adras' instructions, and Malgus watched as the droids were slaughtered by Republic forces. On the other hand, the defeat of the droids distracted the Republic troops enough to enable Venomal with his commandos to penetrate the city and burst a breach in the wall. Livian Magnus was easily defeated by Malgus's forces and Adras attempted to claim all the acclaim for the victory, leading Malgus to dislike his opponent even more. Malgus's soldiers were not resupplied despite their early success and Malgus worried the Sith might lose all control of the city. Although the Ministry of Logistics was in charge of supplying Malgus' forces, Malgus had no authority over the Ministry's head, Minister Shulis Kamar, to compel her to assist him. So he, instead, submitted certain requests for supplies to War Minister Sheries. However, Sheries did not reply, and Kamar did not supply Malgus with any supplies, prompting the Republic to dispatch a fleet of Tranta-class corvettes and Hammerhead-class cruisers to assault Malgus' ships in the orbit of Ordradama. Malgus watched as Republic ships fought his fleet from the terrace of a castle in Livian Magnus. So he took his private shuttle and flew up to take charge of the dreadnought Lindworm. By the stage Malgus landed on the Lindworm's pass, the Sith had already lost the fight, and he watched as a wounded Sith Harrower-class dreadnought plunged into Ordradama's atmosphere and slammed into the heart of Livian Magnus. Magnus shouted in anguish as he sensed the murders of Venomal and many thousands of the city's people through the force. The force of his scream broke the bridge's viewport and made the crew's ears bleed and annihilated a swarm of Republic Auric class tactical strike fighters passing by. Malgus ordered his surviving forces to evacuate the system and leap to the core of Sith space, acknowledging that the Sith had little chance of annihilating the Republic ships. Malgus's troops were followed by the Republic after he retreated to Sith space, and a Republic squadron assaulted the Sith colony of Zeost. Malgus took part in the fight, and the Sith were unable to block the Republic's assault, which shortly launched an attack against the world of Ashasri. Malgus was sent to aid in defending Ashasri, and once there, he assumed charge of a stretch of siege vehicles and utilized them to repel a series of Republic vehicle attacks. The Sith troops were finally victorious on Ashasri, and in acknowledgement of Malgus' involvement in the war, the Dark Council assured him that he would never experience a resource scarcity again as he did at Ordradama. Malgus controlled a cipher agent, a high-ranking Sereno noble who operated for Imperial Intelligence, after receiving information from Imperial Intelligence that Ven Zalo, a Jedi Master and the leader of the Republic forces that had taken part in the Battle of Ashasri was currently based on the world Sereno. The agent informed Malgus that the Republic was preparing to move to a new forward base on the planet. A second cipher agent was sent to murder Zalo in order to destabilize the Republic leadership structure, and Malgus intended to lead a fleet of vessels to Sereno once the operative accomplished the task. When Malgus learned that the operation had been effective, he sent his fleet to fly to Sereno and disperse a handful of Republic warships surrounding the planet. Malgus subsequently took possession of House Palerma's villa, which the Republic was currently using as a command center, and was enraged to learn that Zalo had slain Malgus's infiltrator and escaped the world. House Teramo and House Comprasi of the Sereno families disproved of the presence of the Sith in their world and recruited soldiers to invade the residence. The mercenary's attack, however, was unsuccessful, and Malgus watched from a parapet as some Sith hitmen defeated the assailants. According to reports, several Sith resented Malgus for Darth Venomal's death. So, once the Sith Emperor instructed Malgus to reclaim all Dradama, Malgus felt that the attack would provide him with an opportunity to redeem his dignity. Malgus prepared to lead a unit of Sith warriors in an attack on Ordradama's newest capital city, New Raido, with bots, troopers and commandos joining him after the city's defences were penetrated. The fight lasted many weeks and Malgus faced a series of defeats as a consequence of the Jedi's operations. 
Regardless of the fact that the delayed nature of the invasion cost him credibility with the Dark Council, he was delighted by the battle's bloodshed. He was confident that he would capture the world and that this success would earn him a seat in the Sith army, assembling to invade the Republic's flagship world of Coruscant. Malgus also thought that the Dark Reaper, a super powerful weapon utilized in the Great Sith War, had its power source on Ordre Dama. Later, Malgus began assembling a task force in anticipation of an invasion on Republic-controlled territory in the Core Worlds, and the Dark Council provided him with 192 ISF interceptors, four Harrower battlecruisers, and 48 Fury-class Imperial interceptors. The Dark Council approached the Republic Senate in 3653 BBY, 28 years after the war began, stating their desire to negotiate a resolution to the conflict. While the delegates from the Empire, Senate and Jedi Order were preparing to convene on Alderaan to establish a peace treaty, the Sith planned their attack on Coruscant. Darth Angrel, a high-ranking Sith Lord, was put in leadership of the whole plan and Darth Malgus was picked to spearhead an offensive push on the Jedi Order's temple. Malgus joyfully accepted the duty, thinking this to be the fulfillment of his revelation on Korriban that foresaw the Empire's invasion and subsequent annihilation of the Republic. Malgus' invasion strategy included infiltrating the temple and distracting the Jedi. At the same time, a group of 50 Sith warriors penetrated the antique edifice and demolished the planetary security grid mainframe inside. Angrel ordered that Malgus's opponent, Lord Adras, a political friend of Angrel's, operate as second-in-command by directing the 50-man infiltration squad, despite Malgus's desire that he be the only commander of the initial attack. Malgus and his squad meticulously prepared and plotted their mission in the period surrounding the invasion, and the Sith Lord himself inspected electronic simulations of the assault several thousand times. The Sith's plot was set in action as the negotiation parties commenced their peace conference on Alderaan. Malgus, followed by Alina Daru, landed on Coruscant and went walking to the Jedi Order's temple, travelling through large plazas packed with Coruscanti inhabitants, unknowing of the imminent attack. The two took advantage of the chance to exchange their perspectives on both their battle life and the Force, exchanging a passionate kiss along the way. Malgus obtained confirmation from Shea Vizsla, a Mandalorian bounty hunter, that Coruscant's protective grid had been removed in preparation for the Sith invasion before arriving at the Jedi Temple. A group of Temple security staff attempted to stop him, and Malgus instructed Daru not to intervene before killing the bunch. Vizsla, who was monitoring the scene from a niche in the temple's face, took this as a signal and penetrated the temple through a maintenance vent as her teammates entered through the entrance gate. Six Jedi Knights descended from the balcony to confront the visitors, joined by Jedi Master Ven Salo. The seven Jedi advanced as one towards Elena and Malgus as they headed towards them. Malgus's wrist chrono began to beep, signaling the presence of a stolen NR2 Republic ship to the Jedi Temple. The beep startled the Jedi Knights within, who lit their lightsabers, took a step back and formed a battle position. Zalo, on the other hand, stood firm in the face of Malgus. Malgus praised him and bowed his head in acknowledgement. The dropship ultimately broke through the main entrance of the Jedi Temple, skidding over the temple floor, ripping stone, trailing flames, toppling columns, crushing balconies, and suffocating people under it. But Malgus and Zalo stayed till it came to a standstill just behind them. The hatch of the vessel blasted up, revealing Lord Adras and a crew of 50 Sith warriors who ignited their lightsabers. Malgus grinned and ignited his lightsaber as he remembered his vision on Korriban. The reinforcements attacked the Jedi and their security troops alongside Daru, Malgus and Vizsla, the bounty hunter. Zalo and his knights jumped 20 meters backwards, where numerous more Jedi gathered. Adras and the Sith warriors dashed at the Jedi at the same time. Some Republic forces came and aided the Jedi in the fight against the Sith. Despite their blast of fire, Malgus was pursuing Zalo but had yet to meet him. His next victim was a Jedi, whom he slew after a quick duel. A second Jedi, a female Zabrak, attracted his eye as she attempted to approach Daru and murder her. Daru's abilities were ineffective against this opponent, so Malgus stepped in. 
he called on the force and pushed the Jedi through the hall and against one of the stone columns, where she fainted, blood dripping from her nose. The fight appeared to have become more disorganized by this point. Adra sprang into the heart of a squadron of Republic soldiers, punctuated by a burst of force powers that blew the men aside like dried leaves. Malgus then launched a bolt of force lightning that enveloped two Padawans and a Jedi Knight at the same time, killing them and severely burning their bodies. Following these two great accomplishments, Adras and Malgus shared a scornful salute. Daro exchanged fire with another group of Republic forces which drew Malgus's attention. Vizsla fired two rockets at the troops, killing them before he could intervene. She then utilized her jetpacks to hover over another group of warriors and then used her weapon to destroy them. Malgus understood that the balance of the battle had shifted in his favor. He tried again to find Zalo, but was surrounded by three other Jedi, one male, another female, and a Torgruta female. He outwitted them by combining his battling skills with acrobatics. Malgus knocked out the female first by smashing her on the ground with his force-enhanced power. He then leapt behind the Togruta woman, deflecting her lightsaber blows, and used the force to throw her over the strewn ruins. Finally, he deflected the male lightsaber's blow, grabbing him by the throat, hoisting him into the air, and smothering him. Malgus was outraged as he had never been before. He eventually found Zalo, an adversary he deemed worthy of fighting on that momentous day. Zalo's battling skills were outstanding, and he slew two Sith warriors swiftly while Malgus looked on. At the same time, Adras landed just behind Zalo and tried to assassinate him. Zalo deflected his strikes and sent him stumbling across the rear of the hall with a forced shove. Malgus then raced at Zalo, attracting the focus of both Zalo and Daru. Daru began firing at Zalo in order to assist Malgus. Without even glancing at Daru, Zalo deflected her shots with his lightsaber and returned them to her. Two of them hit her, and even as she fainted, Zalo unleashed a powerful blast to send her body into a column. Malgus came to a halt and gazed at Daru. His rage overtook him. Another Jedi approached Malgus at this point. Without even looking at him, the Sith Lord reached out a hand, pushed past the Jedi's shields, and strangled him to oblivion, flinging his corpse aside as he stormed towards Zalo. Malgus was similarly targeted by the Jedi Master. At this point, a Sith warrior assaulted Zalo and was killed by him. Malgus and Zalo eventually met and paused for a minute, scrutinizing each other. Malgus was interrupted by a Jedi Knight attempting to knife him. Malgus evaded the Jedi and hit him, throwing him off balance. He then delivered a lethal blow on the Jedi, but Zalo deflected his sword. For a brief moment, the pair locked eyes and started trading blows. Malgus landed a force augmented strike on Zalo's chest, sending him flying backwards nearly 10 meters. Zalo rose to his feet, but he was surrounded by two other Sith warriors. They assaulted him, but he quickly overwhelmed both of them. Malgus then hurled his lightsaber towards Zalo, directing its path with the force. Zalo, on the other hand, jumped into the air, over it in an attempt to evade the onslaught. When Zalo was still airborne, Malgus fired an energy blast that took the Jedi off guard and sent him falling into a heap of wreckage. He was lying on the ground, prone. Malgus then leapt 20 meters into the air, resheathed his saber in the act, adopting a reverse two-handed hold and intending to pin Zalo to the temple floor. But at the last second, Zalo slid out of the path and Malgus's blade plunged to the hilt in the rock of the temple's flooring. He leapt up and over Malgus, crouching, reactivating his lightsaber and pelting across the floor towards Malgus. Zalo launched an outstanding onslaught of lightsaber blows, foregoing speed and elegance in favor of force. Malgus attempted to counter his movements but could not locate an opening. Zalo was able to drive the hilt of his blade through a side of Malgus's jaw, inflicting a small wound on his opponent. Zalo went forward, saw an opportunity, and shot for Malgus's throat. Malgus, on the other hand, was prepared. He flipped his sword vertically to deflect the strike and twisted out of the weapon lock. During the turn, he reversed his lightsaber and rode it into a thrust that entered Zalo's abdomen. Zalo's face collapsed as he dangled there, pierced by his opponent's lightsaber. Malgus saw the reflected flames of the blazing temple and the approaching Imperial naval forces in his eyes. 
While Sith troops commanded by Darth Angrel gained possession of the Senate building and executed Berukan, the Republic's Supreme Chancellor, the Sith fleets began their bombardment of the capital under the direction of Adras, who had skirted Malgus to deliver the order. Malgus reveled in the devastation, applauding the remaining Sith before going to Daru. Before dismissing Adras for his disobedience in ordering the bombardment, he had Adras call for treatment professionals from the Imperial medical ship Steadfast. Malgus stood by the temple's damaged gate and watched as Imperial bombers annihilated the city planet, using the chance to call Darth Angrel on board the battleship Darkness and alert him of the battle. Once the medical team came, Malgus directed them to tend to the injured, including Daru. Despite her reservations about abandoning Malgus, the Twi'lek accompanied the doctors to the Steadfast in space when the Sith Lord assured her that he would fly to the medical ship when he was done on Coruscant. Adras addressed Malgus and asked him about the fates of the Jedi's bodies. Because Malgus thought they had died honorably, he chose to make their temple their ultimate resting place, destroying the temple with the remaining explosives on the dropship. As the surviving Sith joined Malgus a short distance away from the temple, he examined every detail of the structure before igniting the detonator. The historic Jedi Order emblem collapsed in on itself, spraying debris in all directions. Malgus and his companions erected a force energy wall that sheltered them from the damage, allowing them to celebrate the complete experience in safety. Malgus's men retreated to their circling cruisers while the war throughout Coruscant raged on. The Sith Lord elected to stay at the Jedi Temple Ruins to see the orbital onslaught firsthand. After several hours of waiting and seeing the progressive depletion of Imperial forces, Malgus called the Captain of the Darkness, Jard, and demanded to know why the orbital assault had not yet begun. As the discussions on Alderaan continued, the Captain informed Darth Malgus that Lord Angrel had instructed the Empire's soldiers to move into occupational routines. Enraged, Malgus dashed to the Senate building, wherein Angrel had taken over the seats of the Supreme Chancellor of the Republic, who had been assassinated during the original invasion. Darth Malgus discovered on the way that the Sith Lords had decided to utilize the captured Coruscant as a bargaining ship in the negotiations, rather than decimating the planet. In the Sith Lord's opinion, this directly opposed both his and the Empire's goals and hindered his vision of crushing the Republic from becoming a reality. Captain Rune Neal accompanied Malgus to the Chancellor's seat upon his arrival at the Senate. In an angry outburst in front of his senior, he rapidly began to doubt the change in plans. Unbeknownst to Malgus, Adros had overtaken him to Angrel's supervisory position, and the presence of the lower lord made the encounter a severe embarrassment for Malgus. Unlike his two contemporaries, who sought to exploit Darth Malgus's fondness for Elena Daru and disdain of the Emperor's views as political ammunition against him, the enraged Sith was inexperienced in Imperial politics. As their heated conversation developed, Adros disclosed that he had denied Daru care on the steadfast and had, instead, referred her to one of Coruscant's civilian clinics. Malgus pulled his saber and locked blades with addresses after hearing his competitor refer to Daru as a mongrel. Angrel stopped the battle and ordered Malgus out to meet his beloved, but he kept Adras in the chambers as a clear indication as to where his favor rested. Darth Malgus was given the whereabouts of Daru's infirmary and promptly went there to fetch his sweetheart. The institution had been overrun by casualties of the Sith invasion and physicians, nurses and the injured had poured over onto the hospital's rooftop and the streets outside. Malgus's shuttle landed in the center of the road where he was welcomed by a horde of enraged Coruscanti. As the populace jeered and verbally abused the Sith Lord, one amongst them tossed a piece of durocrete towards Malgus. Malgus was angered by the deed, even thought he was capable of smashing it with the force, and wanted to know who tossed it. When no one stepped up, the Sith Lord tried to disperse the gathering, but all he got were calls for help. In retaliation, he released a surge of force strength that forcibly drove everyone in his proximity away from him, causing further injuries and devastation. Malgus approached the hospital with the road cleared and requested that the nurse guide him to Daru. Malgus took his beloved from the facility and returned her back to the vehicle he had after locating her. 
While in orbit, the Sith Lord reflected on Angrel and Adras's desire of using Dario against him and struggled to reconcile his affection for the woman with his obligation as a Sith. Darth Angrel ultimately contacted him and instructed him to stay in space aboard the Valor to monitor the blockade fleet. Despite his dissatisfaction with the assignment, Malgus agreed and stayed on the bridge of his ship while Angrel and Adras managed affairs on the surface. The fleet stopped a Dragonfly class drop vessel headed for Coruscant the day following the invasion. The owner, a bounty hunter named Vrat Zizor, notified Captain Jard that he had knowledge that would be useful to the blockade commander. Darth Malgus ultimately agreed to meet with the guy who alerted the Sith that a criminal was about to attempt to circumvent the Imperial barrier with a Jedi Knight following him. Despite his skepticism about Zizor's allegations, Malgus increased the Valor's alert levels and increased scans of approaching Imperial supply freighter ships. When an abnormality was discovered within one of the inbound convoys, Malgus dispatched a flight of Imperial vessels to undertake visual inspections of the freighter hulls. When the shuttles discovered an XS stock light freighter hooked on the aft portion of the freighter Dromo, they moved to destroy the ship but were thwarted when the invader moved closer to the super freighter. Darth Malgus ordered the convoy to split so that the Valor could obtain a clear shot in an effort to pull the X excess light freighter out of cover. During the ruckus, Malgus was called by Darth Angrel. However, he delayed responding until he had dealt with the smuggler. Instead, Malgus called the encroaching ship and commanded the pilot to turn down the engines or be destroyed. Malgus went to Angrel's communication after the criminal Zerid Kor declined. The higher Sith Lord told him that the Imperial contingent on Alderaan had acquired intelligence from their Jedi colleagues. A Jedi woman named Aaron Lena had reportedly departed the discussions without authorization, threatening the impending peace. Master Darnala, the Jedi delegation's commander, told the Sith that Lena's acts should not be linked either with the Republic or the Order and that she should be considered as an independent hostile agent. During the Cold War, Malgus was in charge of various operations, including those concerning the Hammer Station and, more importantly, seizing the foundry and overthrowing its master, Revan. Malgus removed himself from the political games being played by several Sith competing for a place on the Empire's ruling Dark Council after the agreement of the Treaty of Coruscant, which formally ended the war. Malgus, on the other hand, led Sith troops to the unknown regions, extending the Empire's dominion into previously uncharted territory. Though a strong combatant, he struck out as an outlier among the Sith of his day, frequently recruiting mercenaries of diverse alien species, deemed treacherous and disloyal by the Empire. As a result, Malgus studied a variety of languages. He also commissioned a weapon of mass destruction, the Emperor's Shadow, to Dark Council member Darth Mekis. And protected. <laughs> The entire story arc of Darth Malgus in Star Wars The Old Republic. Darth Arho invaded Ilum in retribution for the alleged demise of the Sith Emperor in Dromund Kass. Darth Malgus, however, hindered his efforts by assisting the Republic in defeating him in order to see his adversary set aside including assisting in the liberation of Rance, the Supreme Commander. After the Republic vanquished Arho, Malgus took his place on the Dark Council and assumed Arho's post as chairman of the sphere of military offense. He also acted as a military advisor, studying Imperial efforts to capture Adigan crystals in order to build an unstoppable stealth armada. Malgus pushed for the Empire's need for foreign alliances and reforms before and throughout his tenure on the Dark Council. These beliefs were opposed by firm traditionalists such as Grand Moff Ilian Rigus. Unknown to others, Malgus utilized his status on the Dark Council to grab command over Darth Arho's assets, including the crystals which he used to build a stealth fleet, allowing him to carry out his future plans. Once Malgus acquired the crystals, he made a spectacular speech, establishing the new empire and declaring himself emperor, which would be independent of the Dark Council's infighting and driven by alien friendships and tolerance. 
In a statement to the empire from which he defected, he revealed that he exploited the foundry's powers to build a droid army akin to Revan's, but far more powerful. Through merciless violence, his new, real empire would cleanse the galaxy. Malgus asked any and all officials of the present empire to enter his organization, believing that many people shared his concerns about the situation of the empire. Malgus quickly gathered a devoted army of bots, mercenaries, soldiers, and Sith of various kinds. Malgus intended to gain small wins with this embryonic revolt in order to test its power before striking the galaxy and defeating both the Empire and the Republic. Malgus eventually forged several partnerships with major alien forces such as the Schism Collective. Malgus drove his new empire to several early successes, seizing a large portion of the unknown regions. The most significant chance for the budding empire, however, came when news broke that the Sith Emperor had indeed been killed by a Jedi Knight. Just the Emperor's voice had been slaughtered, unknown to all, barring a few. But it was Malgus's most excellent chance to unify the Sith under his command. Several other Sith who had been waiting for the proper time also followed him, departing the Empire due to the Sith Emperor's alleged death. Darth Severin, one of Malgus's closest confidants, pledged his loyalty to him. Malgus amassed a large number of devoted Sith, mercenaries and droids during this period when many felt that the Sith Empire was in shambles. In exchange for Malgus's gifts, the Collective chose to recompense his empire with vital scientific discoveries, such as merging old foundry technology into the seized space station. They also enhanced Malgus's soldiers' firepower using Rakata technology and refining the manufacturing of one of Malgus's war fleets. Darth Severin, an ally of his, was dispatched to Elam to conclude the invasion begun by Darth Arho. However, Severin was beaten and the strike team took a stealth commanding vessel from the fleeting attack and piloted it to the location of Darth Malgus's concealed stealth space station. Malgus was cornered in his throne room and used the station's self-destruct procedure to destroy the fleets attacking it before battling the strike squad dispatched to confront him. Malgus's resolve faded as the conflict progressed, despite the fact that he was a vicious and talented warrior. Using pulse grenades, force skip abilities and other methods, his assailants were able to force him over the side of the platform and into the reactor pipe to his alleged death. Despite the collapse of his coup attempt, Darth Malgus survived the destruction of the Emperor's stronghold, feigning his death over Elam. Many theories about Malgus' survival circulated within the Empire, such as one that hypothesized that Malgus was trapped in carbonite because of the Eternal Empire, while others alleged that Darth Achina found him on the wreckage of the ship and rebuilt him with augmented cybernetics and employed him as an enforcer to grab hold of the Sith Empire. Some thought that he was now the wrath of the Third Empire. Empress Achina put Malgus on a close watch as a result of his failed revolution, and he became the new unwritten Empire's wrath. Malgus reappeared to the world in a supply drop on an Ossus shuttle. Darth Melora saw the supply drop and asked that it not be opened since it may have been sent by a rival to sabotage her business. However, the supply drop opened by itself, revealing Malgus to the Alliance commander, Major Andre, Melora and the others present. Melora, stunned by his survival, attempted to strike him but was shoved aside by the Sith Lord, plunging off the balcony into the depths below. The Sith Lord then seized over the direction of the attack from Melora. He began an invasion on the Jedi colony, which was home to Jedi Master Gnos Dural. Melora, on the other hand, survived the fall and returned to Major Andre and the Alliance commander, stating her opinion that the Empress may have Malgus on a tether, but she wasn't the only one who could pull it. Following the planet's attack, the remainder of the Galactic Republic and the Sith Empire learned of Malgus' survival. Malgus stole a book from Ossus' Jedi Library before embarking for Drummond Cass, unbeknownst to the Republic and the Empire. Darth Malgus gained leadership of an expedition on Dantooine following the invasion of Ossus. Malgus saw Dantooine as an imminent danger because of its location on the outskirts of Imperial space, which made it a highly beneficial base of activities for the Galactic Republic. As a result, the once utterly trivial agricultural world speedily became a key supply benefactor for the Republic's troops in the Outer Rim territories after the conflict against Zakul. Darth Zarion advised the Empire to employ the private organization named the Nova Blades to invade the planet. 
With the Nova Blades' assault of Dantooine being rapid and unexpected, fully catching the Republic garrison off guard, the Sith Empire, led by Malgus, succeeded in a clandestine infiltration of Dantooine. The Sith Empire deployed a small disruptive task force created by them with the purpose of deliberately crippling infrastructure and sabotaging the Republic's military reaction to the pirate menace, with the pirates serving as a suitable diversion. Darth Krovos and Darth Malgus were assigned to lead an operation to destroy the Meridian Complex, a sophisticated Republic shipyard on Corellia, with the potential to tilt the conflict in the Republic's favour. Malgus and Krovos gathered a massive armada, consisting of the vast bulk of the Sith Empire's entire navy, in addition to Darth Nox's silencer fleet, which was now governed by Moff Pyron, and the very last of the destroyers equipped with the Isotope 5 as well as an additional group of fuel ships to allow the fleet to proceed to Corellia without stopping. Malgus discovered that the Republic fleet lacked fuel ships and planned to eliminate Republic reinforcements that fueled on friendly or neutral worlds before they could attack the Imperial fleet on Corellia. Darth Savik, Darth Malora's successor on the Dark Council, was in command of the first target, Onderon, a confirmed Republic world. The next target was Mekshar, a realm teeming with criminal groups operated by Hutbreaker, who chose to hold a bidding war of the five leaders to decide whether to offer fuel to the Republic. Due to her previous understanding of the crime syndicate, Darth Shar was given responsibility for the operation, greatly helped by the Empire's longtime allies, the Brothers. When Savik and Shar's missions were completed, Malga summoned them and their men to Corellia to assist in the war. Darth Malga was present in a battle strategy conference with Darth Krovos, Emperor Vauran, and Moff Pyron. Darth Malgus heard through Theran Sedrax after the Empire soldiers penetrated the Meridian Complex's control room that Tau Idair, Ghost Apprentice, Dural, had transferred power from the main to the subsidiary command center before demolishing it. Darth Malgus fought Tau Idair and her companions until an explosion pushed both warriors away from each other. Darth Malgus was rescued and transported to the doctor and medical droid who had placed Malgus under the direction of Emperor Vauron, who discovered that Malgus had destroyed the control chip with his lightsaber and previously Empress Achina. Malgus awakened, lit his lightsaber and ordered the medical droid as well as a ship. Darth Malgus fell asleep on his way to an unknown location and had a vision in which he was aboard a Sith cruiser, defeated and injured after battling off Imperials and Sith, and then besieged by Darth Krovos, a Sith warrior, and Emperor Vauron. Vauron exposed him to force bolts many times while he yelled that he would never return. Throughout, Malgus maintained that he would never return. Malgus was startled awake from his slumber by Vauron's deadly stroke. Malgus was approached by a medical droid who advised him that his hallucinations and mental condition were deteriorating, and the robot remarked that it had no clue how to eliminate such a psychological influence on him. After some thought, Malgus remembered one such strategy and instructed the droid to make a course for Dentuin. Arin Lena had detected Malgus' approach to Dentuin. She drew her saber to her palm, bracing herself for yet another battle with her master's assassin. The medical droid and Darth Malgus travel to the Jedi Enclave, remains on Dantooine, where Malgus abandoned the droid and continued further into the ruins. Malgus sliced his way through a locked door with his saber and obtained a relic that belonged to Darth Null, an early Sith Lord whose chronicles have been lost from history. Malgus left an echo behind to launch his trap if anybody he formed close relationships with came in pursuit of him with the Alliance Commander. Malgus headed to the Temple of Null on Elam at some time to obtain a specific holocron, but he quickly discovered that the Jedi Order and the Sith Empire had beaten him to it, as two Jedi and a Sith were warring for the holocron, which was within a machine on the temple. Malgus made his appearance and attacked the Sith warrior. Before losing to his wounds, the Sith warrior dubbed him a traitor, while Padawan Sahar Katin, a Jedi, went to retrieve the holocron from a machine, he swiftly engaged in a combat with Denolm Orr, a Jedi master. The Sith renegade attempted to strike the young Padawan with lightning, but she evaded it and made her way to the device, leaving Malgus to spar momentarily with Master Orr. Malgus perceived the Padawan's past 
as the pair arrived at the device, where she was whisked away from her family and sibling to study as a Jedi. Malgus explained to Sahar that this was always the way the Sith and the Jedi functioned, leaving many young people behind because they didn't consider them worthy of wielding the Force or demolished the machine to regain control of his Padawan, trapping Malgus beneath the ruins. Malgus shortly discloses to Sahar that the device Aura destroyed was designed to discover individuals deemed unsuitable by the Jedi. And he told her that if she handed him the holocron, they might still be able to locate her brother. Malgus utilized the Force to ensnare Orr and knock him down after he released himself from the wreckage. At the same time, Orr and Sahar struggled for the Holocron. He then took his most recent victim's lightsaber and battled Sahar for the possession of the Holocron. Malgus then shoved Sahar and utilized the Force to imprison her in debris, allowing him to steal the Holocron off her. As Malgus abandoned the Padawan to her fate, he stated that she had to break out of her cage if she was ready. The final fate of Darth Malgus Whilst the Republic and the Empire were distracted on Manan, Darth Malgus was able to achieve his personal aim and wait for the Alliance commander to find him. The commander then beat the renegade Sith Lord and confined him in a unique prison built to contain someone as strong as him. While locked up and awaiting questioning, Malgus mused on the fact that the Alliance commander assumed the affair was done and disclosed to them that he had unearthed a path to power that was hidden by councils and hidden by thrones. In the meantime, he left the holocron he discovered in Null's temple to be found by Sahar Katin. Malgus then declared that he had seen a revolution of a galaxy engulfed in fire and that the work he had begun would not finish with him since this was only the beginning. Later, the Alliance commander visited Darth Malgus in his jail cell on Carrick Station with queries about the former's curiosity in a child of the Emperor, to which Malgus gave no response but soon fired back that the commander was an idiot and everything they knew about Darth Null was complete fabrication and went on to explain the true history of the mysterious Sith. When asked why he was disclosing this knowledge, Malgus stated that it didn't matter because not only would Null's secret not be buried, but his plans had succeeded and could not be stopped, only to be squelched by the commander who stated that whatever was going on, they would stop it as they left. Darth Malgus was mentioned in the work The Rule of Two by the Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Bane. Darth Sidious later purchased parts of Malgus's notebooks from an antiques merchant and bound these into the Book of Sith, a compilation of the Sith's historical literature. Malgus's military talents and dark side impressed Sidious and his disciple Darth Vader subsequently examined Malgus's writings and saw a degree of likeness between the old Sith Lord and himself. Malgus, along with Vitiate, was regarded as one of the most formidable Sith Lords in terms of raw strength, force and influence. Influence. Very well. Sahar. I'm sorry. What made Darth Malgus so dangerous? Darth Malgus was one of the Sith with a unique personality. He was a fearless frontline fighter who frequently used alien soldiers to do his bidding, even though the Sith considered them untrustworthy at that time. Malgus mastered several foreign languages as a result of his contacts with various extraterrestrial cultures. Malgus had a deep relationship with an extraterrestrial woman named Alina Daru, considering her as a wife rather than a slave. Interestingly, Malgus and Daru agreed that their intimate connection should be kept private from outsiders. He feared that if his competition discovered the truth about their relationship, they would take advantage of him. Only Daru had the honor of calling Darth Malgus by his actual name, Veradun, and only in private. Malgus' attitude matched his status as a fearless combat fighter. He felt he was born to battle, and the Sith Empire was the means by which he accomplished his destiny. The price of the struggle didn't matter to him, no matter how high it may be. Malgus saw the Force as a cause of contention. When questioned by his companion Daru, he stated that the Force had a good and an evil side, which is what he truly believed. In his perspective, the Jedi had a hazy understanding of the Force. He accepted that a few of them were highly effective in their application. 
He, nevertheless, thought the Jedi were idiots. Malgus would not admit defeat at any cost. He was dissatisfied with Darth Vindican, his Sith Master. After killing Jedi Master Kao Sen Darach and learning of Stele Shan and her companion's escape, despite striking the injured pureblood Sith Lord dead, he cherished their last win together, which was paramount. After the failure on Alderaan, Malgus became enraged for a while, battling two Jedi despite his injuries and murdered them in an act of vengeance before fleeing. As a powerful individual, Malgus was courageous and confidently decided to enter the Jedi Temple for a fight with the Jedi only with his lover Daru on his side. Malgus maintained his position as the seized shuttle burst from the temple's entrance gates and slid along the walkway while the bulk of the Jedi surrounding him prepared to leave if necessary. As Ven Zalo, the Jedi Master, stayed still, Malgus nodded in acknowledgement of his lack of fear. Malgus reveled in the slaughter of Republic troops, particularly after a commander employed heavy weapons against him in the Battle of Alderaan. When he felt the need to slaughter someone, he was willing to kill his own companions if no opponents remained, in order to satiate his fury. Malgus's most memorable kill has since been identified as Zalo. Malgus was a warrior of morals, despite his disdain towards the Jedi. He was not used to material pleasures and never drank alcohol. He always honoured his word. Aaron Lina, a Jedi Knight, wished to avenge the murder of Venzalo, her Jedi Master, with whom she had a strong relationship. She found out about Malgus and Daru's connection and intended to take advantage of it. She chose to kill Daru in order to show Malgus the sorrow she felt as a result of his acts. Aaron kept her emotions in check and let Daru survive after meeting her in a spaceport. Malgus also arrived soon after and beat Aaron in a fight. But he saved her life in return for her sparing Daru's life and he gave her the choice of leaving Coruscant. Aaron was impressed yet perplexed. Malgus kept his word and did not make use of Aaron's position while she was departing Coruscant. However, Malgus confirmed his greatest fears and his encounter with Aaron permanently altered him. Daru, like the Jedi, became his Achilles heel. He couldn't afford to be weak any longer. As a result, he murdered his sole companion to liberate himself from the constraints of emotions. Malgus witnesses a premonition of the galaxy on fire on Korriban, the destruction of the Republic's galaxy-spanning administration. Malgus, however, was also a critic of the Sith Empire's policy decisions. Following the Treaty of Coruscant, he was disillusioned with the Sith Empire's policies and believed that the Republic may not be the only system in need of a cleanup. Malgus, in particular, had problems with his Sith opponent, Lord Adras, on a variety of issues and murdered him. Malgus advocated improvements in the Sith Empire following the Treaty of Coruscant, which earned him scorn from some. He wasn't interested in the backbiting politics of high-ranking Sith vying for positions on the Dark Council. Malgus was a dependable military leader who loved to conduct military expeditions into uncharted places in order to expand the Sith Empire's overall power. Darth Malgus was a gifted duelist who specialized in defeating opponents through wrath and raw power. Malgus used acrobatics to boost his efficacy in lightsaber confrontation, in addition to his overpowering physical strength, which suited him well not just in lightsaber showdowns, but also in hand-to-hand -hand combat. His pace was so fast that a regular human would struggle to keep up with the motions in his duels. Darth Malgus, a fearsome Sith warrior who had a fearsome reputation, reveled in frontline battle. He was personally to blame for the killings of numerous talented Jedi Masters. Malgus has demonstrated his ability to use Jar Kai in a variety of scenarios, including the retaking of Korriban, when he used it to kill Kao Sen Darach, a Jedi Battlemaster, in spite of the latter's competence in the same combat technique and triumph against Malgus's master, Darth Vindkan. Malgus's strength, wrath, and laser-like focus provided him with an advantage, allowing him to quickly strip Kao of his saber and eventually murder the Jedi Master. Years down the line, in the sacking of Coruscant, Malgus impaled Jedi Master Venzalo in a brief but brutal combat. Zalo was widely considered as his most memorable assassination. Another small example of this was Malgus's usage of Jar Kai after stealing Denolm Orr's lightsaber during his duel with Jedi Padawan Sahar Katin. Malgus was a strong duelist throughout his life, fighting against both Padawans and Masters. Darth Malgus used a variety of force powers to defeat many Jedi and Republic soldiers during the sacking of Coruscant, including Choke, Force Push, Leap, 
lightning, saber throw and speed. Malgus used his emotions, like his hatred and disdain for others, to feed his dark side strengths. Malgus exhibited the ability and power to deal with numerous opponents at the same time, with little effort. Malgus once launched a strong blast of force bolts that killed three Jedi. Malgus could withstand force lightning assaults. Malgus trolled through his opponent's onslaught of forced lightning during his combat with Lord Adras, utilizing his saber and fingertips as a conduit and diverting it back at his opponent, knocking him off his feet. He honed his use of force bolts to the point that he could create a force maelstrom. In the Battle of Elam, he used Tutaminis to absorb blast of fire from the Voidhound, Meteor, Hunter or Cypher 9, which he shot at with one hand. Malgus also used Force Cries to show his hate for his opponents and to destroy opposing warriors within his range. When his companion, Elena Daru, was shot at by his most formidable foe in the region, Zalo, during his attack on the Jedi Temple, Malgus released power with an outburst of wrath that broke an adjacent column of wall and sent a rain of stone shards around the chamber. Malgus utilized these powers once again in his attack on Adras' resting spot, making his deep loathing for him plain by creating a path of ruin around him as he advanced towards his mighty Sith opponent. Malgus frequently employed force speed to enhance his physical movements. When Malgus challenged Aaron Lena, who was a Jedi Knight, to a battle, an observer attempted to monitor them but was unable to notice their movements owing to their incredible speed. Later, when racing towards the hangar at a spaceport to save Dark from danger, Malgus employed this ability again, leaving the men escorting him far behind. Malgus was skilled in the use of telekinesis due to his strength in the force. Malgus would counterpush his enemies in midair when they jumped at him, knocking them unconscious. Malgus revealed his ability to launch things like missiles at Aaron during their combat. Malgus was also capable of performing Force Grasp and Force Crush. A Zabrak Jedi employed the Force to bring down two buildings on top of Malgus in an effort to murder him on Alderaan. Malgus stood beneath the pile of rubble built of duracrete and steel, stopping it from burying him underneath with a Force. Malgus tamed his rage and honed his might. He blasted the wreckage away and up from him, causing it to crash into nearby structures. Malgus also used a force wave to clear a large mob gathering outside a Coruscant medical facility to check on Daru. The boom pushed everything away from him and bodies collided with one another, walls and windows. The neighboring transport heaved and all of the medical facility's doors slid open and tumbled to the ground. Malgus also confronted Satele Shan, a Jedi master, and her friends in a single battle on Alderaan, putting up with powerful weaponry and force abilities that smash enormous structures around him. He was severely damaged, but he escaped with no discomfort. Malgus could also employ the force to conceal his whereabouts. Interestingly, when preparing to attack Malgus, a Jedi of Alderaan utilized this skill to hide his Force signature, but it was ineffective against him. Malgus was nevertheless able to detect his presence and thwart his goals. Malgus was so powerful in the Force that it required many Force users to bring him to a halt on Elam. Malgus became disillusioned with the condition of the Sith Empire over time, and by the period of the Cold War, he believed that there was excessive infighting among the Dark Council. He was also fed up with the Empire's refusal to utilize aliens to bolster their army. Following the Emperor's demise, Malgus took control of the situation and intended to construct his own empire, accessible to any Sith who desired to follow their interests, dismissing whatever titles they had achieved that Malgus considered meaningless. In his new role as a self-proclaimed monarch, Malgus expected respect. The Sith Lord argued that the Empire's outdated principles would lead the Sith to fade away and that they needed to develop a more flexible network if they wished to survive. Malgus was prepared to demolish the Emperor's stronghold in order to eliminate the ships assaulting them, feeling that the fort was a memorial to the ancient Empire and that its sacrifice was unavoidable. The Sith Lord stated that regardless of whether he was destroyed, the Empire would be revived. Malgus seemed to become loyal to the Sith Empire again after his reappearance in the invasion of Ossus, but in actuality he was merely acting while covertly gathering different Jedi and Sith treasures behind the scenes. He also followed Darth Null, a legendary Sith Lord whose archives were seemingly erased by the Empire. 
During his journey to Elam, Malga speaks with Padawan Sahar Katin about how both the Sith and the Jedi maintained power over the universe by keeping the mysteries of the Force to themselves and not giving them to those deemed unworthy. Malgus, after being apprehended and imprisoned, recalled his glimpse of a galaxy on fire and stated that he started something that wouldn't stop with him. In conclusion, Darth Malgus has risen and recovered his rightful place in the limelight with the launch of the Onslaught expansion. The figure was a tornado of seemingly opposing ideas that resulted in one of the more exciting Sith Lords in Star Wars history. He was a Sith who became infatuated with an alien servant and then murdered her so that no one could ever exploit her against him. He was so sure of a greater Sith Empire that he waged war on the whole galaxy to achieve it. The tale of Darth Malgus is fantastic and just seeing or hearing about his actions seals the deal. He may play an even more prominent role in the narrative if Lucasfilm chooses to develop a movie or series about the Old Republic. Although he may not have Darth Vader's reach and fame, he is unquestionably a Sith Lord worth noticing. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.